What's the word, y'all? Hey, today I low-key wanted to do a recap episode because last night's games had some things that I wanted to talk about. The Clippers remind me of like a mid-major college team that's really good or Denver Nuggets slash Nikola Jokic beat up on the Bucks. But instead, this morning I woke up and saw an article that says one question every NBA team needs to answer at the trade deadline. And y'all know me. When it comes to the trade deadline, there's no better time. So I'm going to try my best to try to answer some of Grant Hughes' questions. And honestly, realistically speaking, a lot of these questions will not get answered at the trade deadline. I, I don't think we're going to see 30 NBA teams making decisions. Uh, but I'm excited. I mean, some people, well, I was streaming the other day, and people in my chat were asking me, do you see this trade deadline being a dub? Because as of right now, there's only been three different trades. I mean, there are some rumors, but not overblowing rumors. The, the rumors revolving around a top talent like Ben Simmons are... Oh, I told myself I wasn't going to talk about him anymore. Um... Okay, so the rumors revolving around like the bigger talent, the superstars or star player, all-star caliber player talent is like, hey, we okay if we don't trade them. So like, it, it hasn't been a ton of buzz. So this could be a dud of a year. But we've had years there wasn't a lot of buzz and then we saw just like explosions the day before. So I don't really know. But before we get into article, let me remind you about our presenting sponsor, which is Prize Picks. Hit that link in the description and download the Prize Picks app and use code Kenny because you're matching up to $100 for all new players. For me, it has added an extra element to watching basketball. For example, it's just you versus the numbers. So let me quickly put together a little, a little entry for y'all. So here's a little fake entry for y'all. It just adds an extra element for me to root for players. I typically only take overs if I'm keeping it a buck with you. So John Moran at 26.5, bro, has been on an absolute tear. I feel like he can do that again against Joel Embiid to come. Oh, Matisse Stiebel, John Morant. We're going to talk about that later. We're going to talk about that later. But I pick over on a lot of players, and there's two different options. There's a flex play and a power play. For a flex play, if one of these four guys doesn't hit their over, I can still walk out in the green. But if I'm feeling really, really good, I can go power play. And that means that if all four hits, it is 10x what I initially put in. There's just so many different possibilities. It's an eight-game slate today, so it's the perfect time for you to get involved. So hit that link in the description, download the Prize Picks app, and use code Kenny because they're matching up to $100 for all new players. Join to close to 4,000 different people that have already hit that link and use code Kenny. Don't miss out. I'm going to try my hardest to actually answer the question that Grant puts, puts together. As if I was the guy in the seat in their front office, in whatever front office, okay? Starting off with the Atlanta Hawks, how do we find balance? Oh, that's like a that's like an existential question. I okay, so I'm shooting 0 for 1. I don't know the answer to this question. Now, currently the Atlanta Hawks are on a seven-game win streak, including the comeback win against the Lakers last uh, yesterday uh evening or afternoon, which is a good one. But I don't know the answer to this question, man. Before they started the seven-game win streak, um, there were rumors all over the place. Ain't nobody in touch other than Trey Young and and Clint Capella. We're in the conversations for Ben Simmons. We like Jeremy Grant. We've heard so many different things. How do you find balance? I don't know. But I'm not looking at the seven-game streak and saying we're good. I don't. I don't look at the seven-game streak and say we're good. We could just ride it out and we're going to be back to where we were last year. I still think there are some moves to be made. Third worst defense is still wild for this team. They need to improve that. I don't know how. I'm just saying that they do. Oh, Boston Celtics. Overhaul now or later. All right, so these are a lot harder questions <laughs> than I thought. I don't know why I thought that I was going to be able to step into a GM role and answer the hardest hitting questions revolving around a trade down for every team. Overall, now, later, this is what I say about the Boston Celtics. Right now, they're currently good enough to be a playoff team slash play-in team. And I'm not saying that the fans should be satisfied with that because they shouldn't. But again, when you think about the, the ages of their, their star players at 25 and I think 23 years old, I think those are the actual ages. I don't think there's any huge, huge rush to try to make seven different trades in this trade deadline because I don't think there is trades out there to make you a contender right now. If you are trading Al Horford, which would be kind of weird because you traded a first round pick to get him, I don't think the value that you're getting back for Al Horford is going to replace what Al Horford has done. Not saying that he's been a star player, but you get you, I th hopefully you understand what I'm saying. If, it is, if the option is overhaul now or overhaul later, I think the answer should be what can we get now versus what can we get later because if they ride out with this roster or something similar to this roster you only make one or two trades at the deadline you're still going to be good enough to have a chance to be a playoff team now you it might be hard to convince Boston Celtics fans a team that's been in the conference finals multiple times in the last five years that hey this might be a year that we are getting just a playing team or again at the bottom of the playoffs but again I don't know if there's any extreme rush to 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 make trades um Brooklyn Nets How's the buyout market looking? My answer to this question will probably be dim. 
Because if you were to look around the league, there's probably 26 different teams that still think they have a chance to make the play-in, which is good for basketball, that there are a lot of teams still like competing and there's not a lot of tanking teams. So you got Goran Dragic here. Every report that I've seen, there are multiple teams that are interested in Goran Dragic. Now, will the Raptors be able to get a valuable asset in return? I don't really know, but it feels like we're going towards a Goran Dragic trade more than a Goran Dragic buyout, but I could be wrong. He was like chilling at the Miami Heat game the other day, which is just weird. His team was actually playing a game and he was like, ah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in Miami with it. I'm in a 305. So next. Okay, what do we have? What is the what is Miles Turner worth? Anything that's not anything that's not named Ball or Bridges. Now I'm not saying trade the whole team, but a package of a few players. A first round pick lottery protected. James Book. I, I don't know. But Miles Turner is the type of dude that you need on this team with a mellow ball, in my personal opinion. Of all of the options that will that is available or will become available soon. He is the perfect dude for that for that role. So I would say if if the Pacers want to go laterally and want Gordon Gordon Hayward, here's Gordon Hayward for you. We got Kelly Oubre coming off the bench and now he's a starter. Um, even though Gordon Hayward is one of those dudes that you don't really, when you watch, you don't really pay attention to. Do you look up at the stat line and be like, oh, he got 18 points right now? Dang, I don't even remember him scoring 18. Is Patrick Williams a core piece? Yes. But if my front office decide no, then I'm, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know. I'm right there in the middle when it comes to Patrick Williams. I would love to keep him on the team. But if they decide to make a trade, getting rid of him to bring in something else, I'd be okay with it as well. Um, I have no idea. Yes, my answer would be yes, though. Uh, where do you find another ball handler for the Cleveland Cavaliers? Now, they traded for Rondo. Gave up pretty much nothing for Rondo. And it was a good, it was a good you know, opportunity for Rondo to get more minutes. And he's been... Uh, He's been hit or miss. Yesterday, they gave up a huge lead to the um, to the Pistons. And in them giving up that lead, they have Rondo on the court because we need this floor managing point guard, not named Darius Garland, but another ball handler. And it got to the point where he had a nasty turnover and he hit all backboard on a wing three. You probably want somebody a little bit better than that. You know what I'm saying? Um, is it is it Dennis Schroeder? Potentially. I, I still like Karis LeVert for them. I still like Eric Gordon for them because they, they serve as kind of both guys that can spot up or get themselves a bucket, but can also be secondary ball handlers. Dennis Schroeder would fit that mode as well. But again, I, I like those other two options just a little bit more than Dennis Schroeder for, for what they need. Because because those other two guys, I know Karis LeVert maybe not the greatest spot up shooter, but they're better than Dennis Schroeder when it comes to spot up. Eric Gordon is a spot up guy. So when Darius Garland is doing a pick and roll with with um, with Jared Allen, I don't really trust what the heck Dennis Schroeder is doing off the ball. But I trust Eric Gordon. And I trust Karis LeVert a little bit more than Dennis Schroeder. Next, <laughs> another Dennis Schroeder picture. What does the $10.9 million get us? I thought this was definitely going to be uh, more revolving around um, Jalen Brunson. Because I think their big question this trade that line is do we believe in, in Jalen Brunson's $20 million asking price? I've been seeing a lot of people trying to put it on the same level of uh, Fred Van Vliet. When Fred Van Vliet was at this role, where, like I'm coming from a guy that was coming off the bench to emerging as a starter and a really good looking starter. What could the ceiling of Jalen Brunson be as a dude that was a, you know, set, was he a late first round or second round pick coming from a mid-major? Their, their careers of eerily similar other than the fact that freddie won a championship around this time um eerily similar what did freddie get at this point what does Jalen get with you giving Jalen 20 million dollars what does that mean around uh, with the other pieces that you could potentially put around dallas mavericks and, and luka Doncic? i don't really know to answer your question what could you get you could get shooter how soon is help arriving hopefully sooner rather than later but you know what the the different nuggets since the turn of the the calendar year have looked really really good i was watching them against the bucks today and there was a graphic that they put on screen that was like when they have bench help they're eight no which makes sense if your bench is going to pro <laughs> produce points you're going to win games uh, but eight no but that's this calendar year which means that the bench has been providing way more this year this calendar year than they were in the first couple months of the season a lot of that is like bones highland becoming now the new backup point guard and not like an off guard combo guard he's actually the backup point guard um you got some more people off the bench and yesterday against the bucks they could have missed Aaron Gordy was hitting step back threes. Uh, Austin Rivers was jab, step, jab, step, pull up threes. How soon can help uh, arrive? Hopefully sooner rather than later. But right now they look to be okay without Jamal Murray. So I would say don't hyper rush bro to get in, especially since you're still like seven games over 500 without him. Make sure he is close to healthy as possible before you put him back in that lineup. How high can you drive the asking price with Jeremy Grant? I was reading an article yesterday or two days ago that was making the point that Jeremy Grant not being not hooping right now is probably better for his trade value you like kenny what sense does that make 
because he's injured, what teams is traded for injured dude. I believe that the idea, the mode of Jeremy Grant is probably better than what Jeremy Grant actually is. So him not hooping is not showing people, <laughs> it's not showing people that he might not be the missing piece or he might not be the guy that, that deserves $120 million is what he's asking for after this trade or after his contract is up. So probably better for them. You know what I'm saying? It might be the, the Kings offering something and then Troy Reaver, is it Troy Reaver? Whoever running the piss is like, hey, Atlanta, the Kings just offered me this and I like that package. You want to counter? And now you get an extra second. Now you get an extra lottery protected pick. Next, should we be attached to James Wiseman? This is a really hard question to answer. If I was running the Warriors, I would say you shouldn't be attached. Now, I'm not saying I'm giving up as, as a fan of, of basketball that I don't think James Wiseman can be good because I'm actually on the polar opposite of that. I still think James Wiseman has a ton in the tank. But if I'm looking at the Warriors, what we have now, we have three all-star players. We have another dude that has been an all-star multiple times that is starting to get it better. The last two games of Klay Thompson have been better and better. Like, he's getting there. But even with that said, I don't feel like we're we're untouchable. The Suns are still probably the better team at this moment. You know what I'm saying? James Wiseman, even though bro ain't really played in his NBA career, you cannot tell me a rebuild a team, a team that might be selling, wouldn't look at James Wiseman as the cream of the crop when it comes to young talent that we could potentially trade for. I don't know if that means you traded for Miles Turner. I'm not saying that. I don't know if that means you traded for Sabonis. I don't know if that means you traded for this player, this player. But I'm just saying... I would not be looking at James Wiseman as a player that is untouchable on my team right now. I think that you could still get better. The Warriors could still get better with their three all-stars and Klay Thompson. They could still be better. So I would I would be listening to offers. I'm not saying I'm pulling the trigger on anything, but I'm listening to offers. Next, um, can we tear this thing all down, all the way down? Answer, yes, I think you can. Indiana Pacers, can we walk back the... Can you walk back the rebuild talk? Yes, you can. Should you walk back the rebuild talk? No, you shouldn't. Just rebuild the goddamn team. Stop it. Just, I'm just so annoyed with this organization right now. Just rebuild, bro. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Oh, dang. Does the tax matter? Uh, I would say, of all of the players that could get you under the tax, the only dude that I would trade is Serge Ibaka. When I watch the Clippers, they remind me of a mid-major team. It don't matter who, it don't, and when you're game planning for them, you don't know if you should game plan for Luke Kennard, you should game plan for Mook, you should game plan for Reggie, or you should game plan for anybody. If you're trying to get under luxury tax, trade surge, because bro don't even really get minutes anyway. But the rest of the dudes I'm keeping because there is still a possibility that Y can come back or there's still a possibility that PG can come back. And if all if they come back and they still have these younger slash role players playing at that caliber, this is a team I do not want to see in the playoffs. It's a big if. It's a big if with Paul George. It's a big if with Kawhi. But this is a team that I would be scared to see. Amir Coffey, scared to see him in the playoff series. Next, where's our wing stopper? I don't know if you're going to get him. Um, is it time to flex? I love it. Yes. Do it. Do it. Trade all the picks. Trade some of the younger players. I, I, I do want to ex accelerate the Memphis Grizzly rebuild. Because they're already one of the best teams in the league. So they've actually thrown uh, gas on this fire organically by, by drafting well and making the right signings. But I still believe that they could go out there and make a Bradley Beal trade or make a Jalen Brown trade if Jalen Brown is on the market. I would love to see it. Is it realistic? Probably not. But you have assets. You cannot tell me that the Anthony Melton at, at 23 years old is a Kenny for an all-star on a great contract three years. I think he only $24 million left on his contract. If I was a team rebuilding, I would want the young De'Anthony Melton. Not saying that I think he's going to be a star, but as a great role player slash glue guy, he's been that. Um, you can't tell me that a team won't want 24-year-old Brandon Clark and then all of the plethora of picks. Is there a team out there willing to take a shot at Jared Culver? Get him on his third team in three seasons. Is Duncan Robson expendable? With the emergence of Gabe Vincent, who's been his plug-and-play, plug some games I can play make, some games I can spot up shoot, or Kayla Martin on a two-way contract, the answer to this question is probably yes, unfortunately. Um, is he expendable? I, I think he I think he is. Um, and his minutes have been gone down. His production has slowly cramped, uh, got back up there. But is he expendable? I think he is. I wouldn't say that we trade him for nothing. But if teams are calling because they need shooting, I'm not hanging up the phone because Duncan Robinson is that for us, you know? Um, what is the market for Dante DiVincenzo? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I, I literally don't. Something, right? He's only 20, I don't know, 24, 23? I couldn't even tell. It's been so long since we've seen the real version of Dante DiVincenzo. 
or the best version of Dante DiVincenzo. So I don't really know. Can we be realistic about D'Lo? Ooh, could they be realistic in trading D'Angelo Russell? I just don't know what you'd get back for D'Angelo Russell that helps you either now or for the future. So that's why I would be hesitant. If they, if you were telling me that Ben Simmons was coming and you trade D'Angelo Russell, I'd do that in a heartbeat. But that's just, I don't think that's realistic. Um, can we splurge on some shooting? Yes. There are some rumors about them potentially wanting CJ McCollum, and I would love that fit with CJ McCollum being on the team with, with Zion coming back and Brandon Ingram. How does CJ McCollum and a um, Devontae Graham backcourt look? I, not great, but as far as like just having the pieces with, with CJ as a, as a guard scorer, Brandon Ingram as a wing scorer, and it opens up the game for Zion when he comes back in 2028. I, I, I like that a lot. Or is it Duncan Robinson, who is strictly a spot-up guy? Can we stay patient? I, I am team panic trade for any team, not just for the Knicks, except for my team. I think I think the league is better when teams are making panic trades. So if that's the case, can we stay patient? We can, but we shouldn't because the fans want to see panic trades. Again, it hasn't been what Leon Rose and his team has done in the two years that they've been here. Panic trade, do it. Anyone got any first rounders? Serge Ibaka, this is, hey, help us get under the tax. We'll give you a lottery protected first rounder. Um, anybody got first rounders? Yeah, people do. They do. And you probably watch the Thunder get an extra first rounder. It might be one of those fake first rounders, but watch they get something that is named a first rounder. Um, can we just appreciate this for the moment? Uh, what, what are we talking? No. Trade them. I don't, I don't even know. They are on a two-game win streak, though. Shout out to the Mavs. They beat the Bulls, and then they beat... The Dallas Mavericks, those are two really good teams. They are a very fun team to watch at their young age. And I think that even trading away um, their older dudes, when in this case would be Terrence Ross, they could still be a fun young team with 10 wins. You know what I'm saying? Um, who wants Toby? I don't have the answer to that. Do we need a small ball five? I would say yes, just to be sure. Busy, JaVale, DeAndre Aiden have looked great with Chris Paul, but I would want to get an extra small ball big just in case. The the Wayne Wright guy has been looking good, but I would want to just to just get one just in case. Even if Thad played five minutes, ten minutes a game, I would want that just to be as dynamic as possible when you're going against every possible team. Cool. Next, what form will retooling take? I was a hey, retooling. I want to rebuild. You feel me? Is, is De'Aaron Fox a cornerstone? The way Tyrese just beat up on... Now, nah, they didn't win the game. But the way Tyrese just played against the, 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 the 76ers, I want more of that. And I'm not against Team De'Aaron Fox. I'm still Team De'Aaron Fox, for sure. But if the value of De'Aaron Fox can open up the wings for Tyrese and also help you become the play-in team slash playoff team you want, I would say no. But as far as talent goes, come on, De'Aaron Fox still has a ton of talent, bro. Still has a ton of talent. What are our, what are our consolidations options? I don't really know. I'm not too in tune with with the Spurs or who's the untouchable pieces or who are the pieces to build around. I've been watching the Spurs more lately. And yeah, I watched them uh, blow that lead against the Suns, which makes sense. Dejounte wasn't playing, and they were missing a lot of players too. Um, but I, I'm not in tune with the average Spurs fan on who's untouchable. Is Keldon untouchable? Is Dejounte untouchable? I would hope so. Or is this player untouchable? This player untouchable? I don't know. Can we trade Chris Boucher and Gordon Dragic? I think you can. It's whether or not you think you're going to get the value back. You can't. For sure. You can't. You can't. It's, it's like that good old, um, can I go to the bathroom question. Like, yeah, you can. But, you know. Um, can we flip Joe Ingles for a defender? Well, Joe Ingles potentially tore his ACL last night. So, I would say no to that. Get well soon, Joe, uh, Joe Ingles. And then lastly, which second stars... <laughs> Should the Wizards go look for a secondary star? Are they saying, Bradley Beal, we love you. We want to get a number two for you. They got the pieces. They got the pieces to get a secondary star. I mean, yes, a star that's behind Bradley Beal. And that will be a Sabonis thing. They have the pieces. But I don't, I don't know. 